Welcome to the Young Saints Leadership Podcast, where we're going to be talking about all things youth, from leadership culture to supernatural youth ministry and discipling revivalist. We hope you guys enjoy. <laughs> hello, hello everyone. Oh man, it's when you've heard it so much. It's so funny. Yeah, yeah. I listen to yeah. that intro and I'm just like, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Bob my head a little bit, you know. I was, I was feeling yes. it a little bit more too. Anyway, we are back this week, everybody. Hello, hello. This hello. is Mari and Rory and Dante. Well, hopefully they're getting used to hearing our voices hopefully. and our names, so hopefully. we don't have to keep introing hopefully. every time. It's yes. the same three. You yes. know, Look we'll let us. you know if there's something different. Yeah, How about that? One. Might be. Hey. There definitely will be. Oh, for sure. Okay, we just so, can't. We just don't assume, surprise. you guys. Yes. You never know who's Anyways. on here. I guess if there's someone new, we might write that so then you would know. I, don't I know. guess so. Yeah. That's probably true. The, yeah. Anywho, we have had an amazing week mm -hmm. this week. We are very excited to be here today. Made a great team night. Yeah. Team night. That was two it? nights ago. It, it was, was really a new yeah. a new team yeah. night. Normally they are at night. our house, Rory and I's house, and our girls love it because they get to see all their favorite people, mm -hmm. but it can be a little crazy. And then our team is just getting too big, giant, and we don't really have a huge house, so <laughs> we we felt a little more like sardines there. <laughs> you know, like just that in this moment little... when you're like, you can spread out for worship and you realize there, there's literally there's no, no room yeah, to yeah. even go yeah, anywhere else. I get it. It's too it's, much. It was a lot. Was but there was some beautiful things of worshiping granite. in that house because oh, it sure. did 100%. feel small and like quaint and it felt powerful just being so loud together. It was really beautiful times, but it was time to change. And so we went to this, honestly, this great room at our church has a bunch of comfy couches mm -hmm. and nice little coffee tables and chairs around and we fit great in there it's true and for those of you who don't know team night is our like monthly gathering of all of our youth leaders so for junior high and high school team it's a lot of fun yeah i thought it was great it was great our people brought worship, some snacks worship snacks, was powerful didn't learning, feel like culture, sardines in there didn't and feel like sardines honestly with it not being at a house it does take away that like comfiness a little bit but it also brought more formality to where we were able to have more yeah. condensed impact yeah. in a short time rather than I was just comfortable. chill. I, that chair was nice. That, that is was, a nice we chair. We are blessed. Yeah. That room is nice. Like it was, it's a really great space mm -hmm. to meet for a team. There's yeah. a huge whiteboard wall to strategize. There's a it's big so TV good. in the corner. I love whiteboards. For all my people that love whiteboards, I strategize. love whiteboards. I could care less about a whiteboard. Oh. <laughs> You put a whiteboard in a room and I come alive. 100%. I'm like, bring it he on. He does. And then he writes on the board and it's like this teeny but little he, writing. And you're like, I don't even know what that says. And then he starts writing like upward. It's like, is that letter going to the heavens? It's no. like going up. <laughs> Sometimes up. I don't know how to make it straight, but I love it. writing on a whiteboard. He does. And it's like, yeah, yeah. I guess funny. the benefit now to being um, like on campus at Bethel versus at a house, we don't have to use like a chair to prop up the whiteboard. That's really <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. There's a lot of benefits. Yeah. And we're not putting our kids to bed in the middle of the meeting so we can actually like, yeah, yeah. You know that yeah. we're going to be there. Honestly, from this um, last team night, one of the highlights for me was hearing um, our leaders share mm -hmm. their experience of um, discipling students and spending time with kids on the weekends, yeah. throughout their days, and, yes. and just hearing their perspective. There was so much gold just yes, in was. our team, and they got to share. Yeah. I think it's hard to see sometimes because there's such a big team. You don't always get yep. to hear everyone share. Right. And it was just a really amazing time to hear someone and that would not inspiring. normally talk share to our whole yeah, team like what I was they're inspired. doing yeah it was, was inspiring. inspiring it wasn't just like oh we're just gonna have somebody share and what they're doing it was like it's, oh man this is yeah and then you kind of wonder yeah. god's speaking to you like that and you haven't said anything yet <laughs> what you doing bro <laughs> so yeah true yeah. so sometimes people just need that space to be given to show what they have inside them which yep. was a great time yeah. yeah honestly yeah it was powerful so. I walked away with a lot of stuff. You always know when it's good when you're like, oh man, I walked away with like new inspiration, new ideas. Mm -hmm. Felt a burning from the, from the Lord to like, we got to do this. Yeah. 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 Felt very purposeful. It was good. All right. Anyway, well. we have a great topic today. Yee. One that's very near and dear to my heart. Yes. Um, honestly, have you guys heard the song, All is for your glory? 
Have we heard anyway, this song? Anyway, I'm sure most of you have. I've been taken up to heaven in that song. And you know, it's kind of an old song, but you know, like mm. when these old songs come back around and you're mm-hmm. like, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And there was that line, catch me up in your story because all my life is for your glory. And something in that just started resonating with me and I've just mm. been pondering it and I would love to hear your guys' thoughts. I wrote a little blog for our yeah. Young Saints thing. and um, Yeah, and honestly, there's a post that, you did as yeah. well, where a lot of people responded to I'm it. I'm not a huge Instagram person. I'm trying. Dante's yes. wife, Chantel's, told me how to make reels. And I'm like, I'm figuring <laughs> it out, guys. Okay. I'm working on it. Because it is fun. And yeah. But I made this post because Chantel's like, Mari, people want to hear what's inside you. I was like, okay. So I just <laughs> tried it. Tori's like, you need to write out stuff more. People want to hear. And I'm like, okay. So I was just with the Lord one day. And I was like, gosh, I'm really feeling this. I wrote it down and posted it and it went, I mean, from what I know of Instagram, it went far. Uh, like yeah. I saw people sharing it left and right. And I was like, wow, God, you really are breathing on this thought yeah. and this process that's been going on in me. Yeah. It wasn't just convicting. It was inspiring. Yes. Like you don't, you didn't walk away from that feeling bad about yourself, mm-hmm. but realizing you're part of something greater. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was amazing. Because honestly, I think mm-hmm. if it was authentic, I think you can feel even through Instagram when it's authentic of like, right. this is challenging me. Like yep. I want to use this to yep. change the way I think and how I live. And the whole thought is, are we building our life to be a part of Jesus's story or just trying to weave him into ours? And I think that's the thought I've been challenged with. I feel like in our culture today, it's all about build yourself, become successful, make your influence grow and go to this course and go to listen to this podcast that you're listening to right now, (laughs) which obviously we all believe in and we've all benefited from. But I think there's this thing right now, there's an overemphasis on those things as if they are the thing to get you to feel alive and purposeful. And I just, I think we need to get back to that main thing of Jesus is the hero of our story. He is the focus of our life. And he has been weaving this beautiful tapestry since the foundations of the earth that we're, our life and story is just another thread in that tapestry. Yeah. Yeah. A couple of months ago, I was um, reading um, in Nehemiah. Mm Mm-hmm. And about building the wall and how each, um, there's different families. They were all building mm-hmm. something. Um, and I, I look at that picture a lot because I think a lot of times, you know, when we're building things that we feel called to or dream or whatever, so many times we can get preoccupied with that wall, that yeah, one wall. Exactly. Like, Man, I'm building this wall. And we forget that it's a part of a greater picture. Like, actually, I'm building the house of God. Like, yep. I'm, I'm building something that goes beyond my wall. Right. Like, yep. it, it's an important part, but I need to know the, the space that it's in isn't just this, like, oh, man, we're going to. We're going to have like coffee and tea on my wall and like people are going to get saved at my wall and, and my wall is the best and I got graffiti on my wall. To, you oh, see that piece so of my wall? I'm relevant, yeah. you know? You see yeah. my wall? Look at my wall. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that one of the things is we have forgotten the original commands where anytime Jesus is telling his followers, it's all about the kingdom of God has come. We're, we're advancing the kingdom and we're building the church and it's all language that is a lot bigger then yes. one person, he never is saying we're building one family besides the family of God. Yeah. And I think that's a great picture because right now there is that temptation to be like, gee, almost Jesus, what are you going to do for me so I can fulfill my call? Forgetting the call came from him. Yeah. So it's a response to go, God, I want to fulfill the call. And what does that mean? Yeah. What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. I remember somebody saying, they were like, when we get to heaven, I can't remember who this was, but somebody was talking to me. They were like, when we get to heaven, I think it's going to be really eye-opening when somebody realizes the family that's in another nation that's serving in missions could potentially be highlighted stronger than the person that we would think in America is famous in Christianity. Mm. Yeah. And we would go, wait, I don't understand. They did so much. And that family over there, like th- they had a church of 30. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the Lord was like, no, no, no. But that was the part of the story that I had called them to that I celebrated in. Yeah. Um, and they were following me completely. This other one, man, they started building something that I, I might not have always been a part of. Yeah. 
Yeah. Or, I think my thing. thing with, obviously we're all supposed to build, right? This is what yeah. we're supposed to do. I don't want to have an unproductive life that nothing <laughs> happens. Sure. I'm For not sure. saying that. I'm saying more. I just think the culture in our day has like almost tainted the building processes. That's what's making you successful. Right. Rather than the obedience is what makes you successful. Because if you build yourself, and I, I think there's just so much of that self-discovery of what's my purpose, who am yep. I, what am I called to, that's the thing where it gets a little tainted. If you build like we're supposed to, mm -hmm. that's how you become successful. And it's not true. Yep. Like your obedience and being known by Jesus and yep. spending time with him. It is the way Jesus lived in the Bible was so countercultural then it's even more countercultural now, now, which is crazy. Of like, we all feel, I mean, every person listening probably feels the pressure to hustle right. and yep. to become yeah. and to build our lives and our families and our ministries and our youth groups. And how many more kids can we get? Cause that's what <laughs> is our Instagram being followed. This is what success looks oh, like. So and true. I think that's the, mindset that the Lord is trying to renew of it is not about the numbers. It is not about famous Christianity. If your youth group is known, you've arrived, you're more powerful. It's not true. Yep. Like we have to shed that way of thinking. The thing that makes you most successful is being known by God yeah. yep. and to know him. It's so true and being obedient. And I, I just feel like that's the thing that's gotten lost as I'm like, when the Lord will ask each of us to do something. And, and then whatever he's asked is the most important thing we could be doing. And if the Lord builds this house, unless the Lord builds this house, the labor is labor, labor in, vain. in vain. And you're yeah. like, so somebody can be like, man, I, I want to do X, Y, Z. And the Lord's like, yeah, but I didn't call you to that. Mm -hmm. And you're like, but no, God, that's so amazing. I want to do that. And he's like, yeah, but I didn't call you to that. Yeah. So you could go do that. But I actually haven't called you to do that. And you're like, but that's the awesome thing. <laughs> that's the thing that's celebrated. Um, it's like the fascinating when Peter and Paul, they each get called to the opposite people group. And you would think, why would God do something like that? Mm -hmm. He's, it's against my strength. Like when people rely so heavily on strength stuff and personality and what's my niche and what's the place that I am the strongest and then the most compatible and everything about me is geared towards this. I'm like, man, we don't see that in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Like if that was true, Paul should have gone to the Jewish people. Right. Yep. And instead he goes to a people he doesn't know and doesn't know him. Yep. 100%. And Peter, it's like crazy to me. So yeah, it's fascinating. I think this is the reason why people get so, there's so much disappointment in the church, even towards God, because mm -hmm. we have um, created our own plan of what all of our words and our callings mean. <sighs> And yeah. you see it a lot in like the worship culture, because obviously I, I'm in that. And so I, I see it happen so often that if you get a word that you're called to be a worship leader, in order to be successful and the word is fulfilled, you have to have albums, you have to be traveling, you have to be known. And that's what means the word came to pass, yeah. right? It could be the same in youth ministry yep. of you get called, you're supposed to be a youth pastor. You're supposed to impact you're kids' gonna lives. You're going to reach a generation. Mm -hmm. And we as youth pastors think, okay, my youth group is successful is the moment my youth group is known looked at and sought after right. to the point where I'm traveling, I'm speaking and I'm being called on. Yeah. I did it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's what determines our success. And I think because that's not the success of God, that it doesn't happen for everyone. So there's so much disappointment and so much mm. feeling of failure and purposelessness yeah. because we have created a box that this is what success looks like. These are what my goals look like. This is what I'm called to. And when it doesn't look like that, we feel like it's not happened. Yeah. Whereas I could look at a worship leader and say, you want to know how you fulfill that call of worship leading? You go be a worship pastor of a 30 person church. And I promise you, if that's what God is calling you to, you will feel more successful than you will if you're a traveling worship leader. Yeah, it's so true. It's the same for youth ministry. You will feel the most successful and the most fulfilled when you are obedient yep. and you, you get rid of the mindset of what is successful youth ministry look like and you just receive what he's calling you to and you say yes 
after yes, after yes. And I promise you, you'll feel the most fulfilled because you're living in obedience. And that's perfect communion. And And I guess that's the question. What fulfills me? What fulfills yes. me? Yes. Like, and, and can I actually answer that honestly? Yes, that's yes. what you because, have to be so yes. honest. Be- because Painfully because min- honest. ministry has this gratifying sense yes. when yes. you see someone crying in front of you because yes. you just gave them a word. Yes. You're like, yes, I'm on. Like, God so just powerful. used me. He just used me. Yeah. yeah. And we have this innate desire and and we're made to be used by God. Totally. It's how he created us. Like but sometimes to, we're more impressed with us than we him. get so lost in yes. the, the the swirly feels nope. of what I did or what I thought I did. Yeah. I just had this conversation. I was literally talking to somebody the other day and I said this. I was like, I think sometimes when the gifts manifest, we forget to equate that they were given by him yes. and we forget the faith. And we're almost like, like we'll do a word of knowledge and we're like, oh, yes. we got it right. Look at yes. how powerful. And everyone's like, oh my gosh, you're amazing. You, you got get highlighted for it. Right. Yep. And you're like, wait, why am I? Like, or, or you see other people get highlighted and for then doing those things. you feel yes. bad and you're like, oh, why am yes. I not? I'm not as spiritual. I'm like, why would we not all stop and just go, God's amazing. And am I being obedient? And am I being obe- like, I should be fulfilled that God is in our midst, that yes. he's actually doing something. Yeah not fulfilled if I'm the one highlighted in the action. Yeah. Yeah. I think what's hard though is our culture celebrates certain things. So we deem that as successful. And sometimes you can't always celebrate obedience because you don't see it. Oh yes. Obedience, and I think oh. that's where we've gotten Ooh. off you is you can't always Ooh. see when someone was obedient. Why is that the thing? Why is obedience always, always like <laughs> backside of the desert stuff? Yeah, it's always yeah. like, Hey, go do this and don't no tell anybody. You know, like, those Ugh. small yeses, those yes. little small no's. Yes. Yeah, that's a good word. And I think I heard this message by Christine Kane. Y'all, if you haven't heard her, you need to, I'm sure most have, but she talked about the, like the difference between talent and anointing. Mm. And I think as humans, if we don't renew our mind, we can look at talent or someone succeeding yeah. with their talent and say, Oh, God moved because our hearts were, we were moved. You can be moved by anybody's talent. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And it doesn't mean it was anointed to yeah. break open something, but we don't always see the but difference. It's the, like it's the, the seat. thing of anointing. You got to know the anointing actually breaks the yoke yes. of bondage and slavery. So when Jesus is like, I'm anointed to do this stuff, there's, there's actually something that manifests. Yeah. It wasn't just a gift on his life. It actually was the spirit of God that came in and set people free. Yeah. That's but, what's sometimes not looked and, for. But that's what's kind of unfair. I don't know if that's the right word. I'm a very fair person. So <laughs> take that with a grain of salt. But I think it's you can't always see what obedience is. Yeah. And you can't always. Sometimes talent looks like anointing. And sometimes favor looks like being seen. But I don't, I just feel like the Lord has been challenging me to not think the way we can see, but actually knowing what he's calling us to is what will make you feel known, fulfilled and successful. Yeah. But it's hard in our culture because we celebrate what we can see. Yeah. And that's why it's it's so easy. It's easy to celebrate what you can see. And I would pray as us as leaders, we would us personally and even you listening try to celebrate what you can't see ask the lord for visions or dreams or you ask your other leaders about the the people that are around them serving in their small group and in their little place because you can't see everything and if we only celebrate what we see this is what creates that perpetual that's what cycle gonna gravitate towards yes, and like that that's what i need to success. perform to get i, I need, need to, to get perform. to that because that's the thing that's celebrated yes. and i and i'm not sure if the essence and how god has made me yep. yes. created me to be a part of his story if that's valuable yes. in yep. this space yes. yep yeah yep it's so true. i um about a year ago i started um putting something into practice um that has really um honestly changed my space uh, my secret space, um, or secret place, whatever you want to call it. And, and it comes, um, I feel like it's affected what fulfills me mm-hmm. like so much. And I'm, yeah. and I'm aware. Um, and, and I heard of Bill doing this and I just started trying it and I actually, um, just did it last night, just the insider or two nights ago, actually. Um, but I take communion and, and I think it's so, um, intriguing that Jesus told us to do this 
like re- remember what I've done, remember who I am, remember what yep. this like this is the thing that you're gonna be doing forever. Yep. Yep. Is is my blood, yep. my flesh. Mm-hmm. You take part in this. That this is where your life began. And that's been like such a um refreshing and um reminder. Yeah. For like, oh, this is where my life starts and this is where it ends. Totally. Yep. Like this is the yep. space that I live from. This yep. is there's no amount of success, failure, disappointments, things that I'm going after, yep. dreams that can equate to the reality that I've been brought into, yep. the story that I'm a part of. Yep. Yep. So, I think yeah. another thing that's helped me is Banning talked about um will it matter in eternity? Mm-hmm. Yes. And I think that's what I look at my life a lot of even the menial task as a mom or um, yep. the practicals of youth ministry, does that really matter in eternity? And I think that's what's helped define where I give my energy and what is successful. Because it doesn't, in a youth group, everyone lifting their hands and worshiping in the worship set doesn't necessarily define success. It's were they actually able to connect with God? Yep. That's an eternal matter. Yes. Not what songs we did or how well we did them. Yeah. Right? Um, yep. And you can look at your life and ask that simple question, will this matter in eternity? Because if it is, that's what is going to make it a successful thing or not. Yeah. Because there's a lot of things of life that we call successful, but really won't matter. Yeah. <laughs> and that would even be something as leaders, like what do you, we're talking about like, what do we celebrate even? Like, how do we make sure we're celebrating stuff that creates culture that we're going, yay, we like that? Yes. W- asking that question, is what I'm celebrating something that Jesus in heaven is celebrating? Wow. Is he so excited about this happening? Is is he like, man, when, when my son reached out to that kid that was struggling and man, like caught him in a moment where a lie was creeping in, mm-hmm. like- Jesus is celebrating that win of truth yes. where sometimes we we're, we're like so focused on like, man, everyone looks really good, man. This youth service ran smooth. I'm like, I don't think Jesus was worried about stuff running smooth. Cause like, he, like yeah. even when he was born, it wasn't smooth. It was yeah. really rocky. There was no space. It was not planned. It was rough. Mm-hmm. Like he's not really worried about smooth. So what's he celebrating? And I think if we can ask that question of like, what's an eternal celebration? Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. It'll yeah. change the way you look at your youth ministry, your life, your family life, your friendships. Think, I can only think of one thing in the Bible right now that it actually says all of heaven celebrates. It's like, that's weird. Yeah. There's just only one, one thing. thing. It's, it's like just one. When, when a lost soul, when, when actually one person comes to find Jesus, yeah. all of heaven rejoices. Mm-hmm. It's just funny that way you think of and that. You're like, and wow. it's funny that you can't see that. You can't see that because you don't always see when the that's person so comes. Interesting. Totally. That's interesting. Yeah, like mm-hmm. there's actually no other place that you would read that all of heaven stops to celebrate a moment. Yeah. yeah. But we celebrate when we're invited Yeah, more yeah. or when we feel like our, our words were taken well, we, we or when we that get that sermon and it yeah. was the best sermon and man, we communicated so well. It's so yeah. True. I mean, it, it's so, it's just very for like even Jamie Riddle wrote a book called the reset and it is mainly for worship people, but I think anyone could read it because it is so countercultural of how our, our culture works yeah. Yeah. and like specifically in worship, it like eternity doesn't matter if you're on a chart for writing a song, that's not an eternal celebration. Yeah. The eternal celebration is who found God when they heard your song. Yes. Right. Yes. And that could be one and you would get just as celebrated as if it was a top charter. 100%. And it's the same with youth ministry. Yep. Your youth service could yep. feel like nothing happened, but one kid mm. found God. Yeah. That is a service to be celebrated. Yeah. That small group, they finally feel connected and finally opened up about their parents going through divorce. That's an eternal celebration. Yeah. They are finally opening up to God and seeking help. Yeah. Those are the things you want to look for as a leader of forget the hustle and the bustle of becoming something or being known or being famous. Yep. It doesn't matter. Yeah. The only thing that matters is eternity and knowing Jesus. And if you know Jesus and you feel known, you will naturally create people that are known and feel known. Yeah, it's good. 
You know what I mean? Uh, we got to put a period on that. that I know. That, we could go that, for that, No, 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 no. But that, that was all great. of that right there, period. Yeah. Say la. If you're sitting here, after you after you get off of this podcast, okay. don't go to the next thing. No. Sit for a second. Yes. Ask yes. yourself Seriously. some hard questions. And then um, hit us up if you need some help. Ah, it's true. That's so good. When you I feel the it. pressure to find yourself, stop and find God. Yeah. He's the only way to help. We love you. You guys are Until amazing. Until next time. Until, Until next, next time. time. Bye. Bye. Bye.